It's happening! Here we go! Mama! 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 September 27th, 2017 will be the final day in which your video will be uploaded to the TV Filthy Frank channel and would also be the last that we would see of the Filthy Frank character. The tale of Filthy Frank and the mastermind behind it all is a tale that is not one for the faint of heart, but it is one to be told to the curious and to the ones that appreciate art, if you would consider this art. Excuse me, what's your name? Mary, nice to meet you. Fuck you. He's got pranked, bro. So who is Filthy Frank? Or what was he would probably be the better question here. Filthy Frank was a character on YouTube that actively existed on the platform from the years 2011 all the way to 2017. This character was created by George Kusunoki Miller, or George Miller, or as you may now know him better as by his stage name, Joji. Yes, that Joji. The one that is a multi-platinum recording artist making profound music to his audience of millions and has tens of millions of Spotify monthly listeners. He was was the one that came up with and portrayed this Frank character for the better part of a decade. So going back to the question, who slash what was Filthy Frank? Filthy Frank was a character that portrayed the stereotypical YouTube content creator that sat down in front of the camera and talked about whatever was on their mind, but Frank was one that was well, filthy. This you were able to see right away in his earliest of videos like filthy shit, Asians piss me off, and others where he responded to hate comments. You guys went ape shit on the I hate Asians video. These were just some of the comments. Ooh, yeah, yeah. People were going back and forth, throwing racial slurs at each other, and I loved it. But holy shit guys, I don't even know where the n-word came from. Ooh, yeah. You guys are more racist than I am. These videos that you see right here were uploaded onto the channel that is now known as Disaster Music, not the TV Filthy Frank one that many of us are familiar with. Here, I'll explain the channel situations real quick so that we can have a reference point. So for this video, we're just gonna be mostly referring to these three channels right here, Disaster Music, TV Filthy Frank, and Too Damn Filthy. Disaster Music is the one George had been uploading on it as the Frank character for years until he had to abandon it in 2014 for several reasons that he went into in a video that announced that he was gonna be moving onto the channel T Filthy Frank. So over the years, naturally a channel like this has taken many, many hits. A lot of community strikes, a lot of copyright. This channel's received so many blows that it can barely stand on its own feet anymore. So upon finally giving in, TV Filthy Frank has become the main channel. So with that, he had already then also changed his original Filthy Frank channel name to Disaster Music now, and he would then make TV Filthy Frank his main, and his Too Damn Filthy channel would now be his additional one. So in reference to his now main TV Filthy Frank channel, Too Damn Filthy would be his second one. So original channel, main channel, and second channel now. But before Frank would depart from that original channel, we did see the creation of another well-known character come to life that was also portrayed by George, and that was Pink Eye. <laughs> And if you're wondering why this character might look familiar to you, it's probably because you've already seen him before. Whether it was in some eventual music that the character will go on to make, or it was some clips of him being a public nuisance, or... Oh! He was literally in the video that was uploaded to the Filthy Frank slash Disaster Music channel that actually started the whole Harlem Shake trend in 2013. Yes, that video and that trend all came from here. So with that going on, George would continue uploading videos on the Disaster Music channel with the Frank and Pink Guy characters and also have many more be added to the show that he would also portray like Safari Man, Salamander Man, and Chin Chin. He of course will have other characters portrayed by other people too like these guys right here who were known as Prometheus and Red Dick. Keep the scene in mind as we'll get back to it later on. So as was said, George has kept uploading the regular Filthy Frank videos onto that channel, but it wouldn't just be those commentary-esque or story time videos or the public buffoonery type of content that would be uploaded to the channel. George would also have his Frank and Pink Eye characters perform some musical pieces. Now granted, it wasn't 100% from the hard music that was supposed to be taken seriously, but it did show that George did have some musical and lyrical ambition slash interest in him. When I was younger, I used to play with Play-Doh. Now that I'm older, I still play with Play-Doh. Capture me, I will be the toughest rapper actually. Watch me as I drag my ass to the top gradually. Flow so pretty, I would turn around and fuck it. Asian girl screams, that's a Bangkok ruckus. But as more and more Filthy Frank videos were getting uploaded by George on that original channel, it did start catching up to him as on May of 2014, he would upload a video titled Filthy Frank Exposes Himself, in which the actual man himself, George Miller, would sit down and talk to his audience in a serious manner about himself and his physical and mental health, citing that the stress that he was getting from making videos and being a college student at the same time were getting to him. And then not just stress being the problem, but also having that stress occasionally cause him to have medical issues.
news. For the first time ever, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I have not been well the last couple months. Long story short, I was born with this, but I was recently diagnosed with a brain condition um, that, ironically, uh, it gives me seizures. George will go on to say that he would just be dialing things back a bit and that he wanted his audience to know that he himself is actually a real person with his own issues just like anybody else. And to show that he still wanted to continue to entertain his viewers with the Filthy Frank characters and such, he will go on to address them directly in the video in a humorous manner. Frank, I love you man. But you're a stressful motherfucker. All you do is you just push and push and push, and that's fine, but uh, to, to an extent, it affects your health and my health. And to end off that video, he would also talk about some things that he was looking forward to doing in the near future, some that didn't end up coming to fruition, and some that did take place, like his announcement of the Joji Vlogs channel, which, as you could tell from the name, would be a channel where George would be himself making vlogs. That channel would only see 10 uploads over the course of about 4 months, and it would then have all of his videos be scrubbed from the channel within the year by George himself for reasons that he eventually addressed a few years later. I see a lot of Joji Vlogs comments so can I just address the Joji Vlogs thing yeah, and clear yeah. things up. I uh, I love doing Joji Vlogs but I just had no time so unfortunately I did not, uh, I, I could not continue with it so I'm sorry. Come on dude, why'd you delete them then? They're still up. Someone re-uploaded them, they're up there. Along with the videos being wiped from the Joji Vlogs channel, he also removed the upload of where he was having the serious talk. Only in that video's case, he removed it almost immediately after uploading it. Theories came out saying that it was because the fan base went harsh on him for breaking the Filthy Frank show illusion and not wanting the real guy himself, George, be a part of it. But this apparent screenshots of his tweets back then have it seem like that he just didn't want his personal life to be mixed into his content in any way, shape, or form. But with all of that happening in the past, for the original Filthy Frank slash this Asta Music channel, we then got to the video of where he promoted the new TV Filthy Frank account that he was now going to be posting on, and things were just as filthy, if not filthier, than before. We had the usual videos of Frank critiquing and talking shit about anyone and anything, and he also did plenty of bizarre things, like making cuisine meals out of dead rats from the streets, and also having the Cake Trilogy take place, which if you don't know what that trilogy series was, it was one where three videos were uploaded called Vomit Cake, Hair Cake, and Human Cake. In Vomit Cake, a cake was made with vomit in it before it got baked. In Hair Cake, a cake was made with hair parts from the surrounding people's bodies, mostly from iDubbbz's head. And in Human Cake, a cake was made from various YouTubers' excess fluids and parts of their bodies like piss, body hair, toenails, and more. All of the cakes, as you would assume, would then be eaten by those on camera. And you'll see why I mentioned this trilogy here later on in this video. So with all of this extraordinarily offensive content going on and gaining an ever-growing audience, it managed to show what the Filthy Frank character and content was all about. As in his YouTube channel bio, it explained all. If you haven't read the bio of the channel yet, here it is. You can pause it and have a good read with it. But it basically says that Filthy Frank is the embodiment of what a person in society should not be and how his portrayal of the character, in a way, showcased what can be seen as wrong in the world of social activity. And how the Filthy Frank character managed to show how easy it was on social media to gain attention by doing the crazy things that he said and did in his videos. And when you take a look at the channel now, you gotta just agree with him there. As it did work in the end, when you look at the scope of it all. But one more thing that was intriguing about the channel and the Filthy Frank characters, besides the running jokes and memes, and collaborations with his friends Max Mofo, iDubs, and Anything for Views, aka Chad, was that throughout the Filthy Frank channels there was this lore and story behind it, where the characters on the screen had like a storyline going on in the background, alongside the videos that were being produced and uploaded by George on the channels. And hey, remember when I told you to keep that one scene with Red Dick and Prometheus in mind? That scene that you're seeing right there? It's what started that whole lore. Without getting too deep into it, back then in the storyline, Red Dick and Pink Eye had a match of rock, paper, scissors, and when Pink Eye won and boasted about it, Red Dick got mad and had Prometheus attack Pink Eye for it, to which then Pink Eye, in a moment of desperation, called out to the Dark Lord Chin Chin to come save him, but Prometheus destroyed him the same way. And then later on, when Filthy Frank was doing a tour of his room, all these characters started showing up in his closet, and then Chin Chin came along, and it led to this whole plot talking about sacrifices and stuff of that nature, and at one point in the story, Chin Chin wanted Pink Eye to be sacrificed for Frank said no, and Chin Chin, not happy with the denial, sent Filthy Frank to another realm in which it was dubbed the Rice Fields. So with Filthy Frank being banished to the said Rice Fields, how was he able to continue making other videos? Well, that's where this guy steps in. This guy is fake Filthy Frank. An imposter, you can say. And you were able to tell if you were looking at the real Frank or the fake one by seeing if you were able to visually see their eyes. The real Filthy Frank, you were able to see his eyes, whether he had on see-through glasses or not. And for the fake Filthy Frank, he always wore sunglasses or something that prevents you from seeing his eyes. I know your secret. 
you're not the real Frank. You're tripping, dog. You're tripping. <laughs> That's why you don't want the Peace Lords to find out. There will be a war. So as you could probably already tell, this background lore just added much more depth to the Filthy Frank videos and it made the contents that much more engaging for the audience and community. Like just look at this, there's hour plus long videos with millions of views out there that document to compile the lore behind the Filthy Frank and Shin Shin saga. That's the kind of engagement that I'm talking about here. Eventually in the storyline we will get the real Frank back and then later on that's where we saw him on the last video of the channel but we'll get to that in a bit. For now it's also important to say that with all of these videos on the TV Filthy Frank channel George continued to put out music on it as well, mostly as Pink Eye, but he didn't just drop songs and singles, he had also put out two albums as the Pink Eye character, one of them being the self-titled Pink Eye album coming out in 2014, and the other one being the more renowned album Pink Season that came out in 2017, and when you take a listen to his projects, you can get a hint of Joji in some of the songs. I live in a constant state of He had then also dropped an EP later on titled Pink Season The Prophecy where it was just like remixes of his music from Pink Season and this EP was important here because this was under the 88 Rising record label slash mass media company and this would signify a huge step into what George wanted for himself and his future endeavors. So with all of this music and all of these videos and all of the filthiness that George managed to muster up in his run as Filthy Frank over those years, it had once again caught up to him in 2017. As behind the scenes he was now at a crossroads where he had all of this fame and notoriety Variety, but now he had to make a decision as to whether he wanted to continue that filthy Frank character and content in the ever-changing landscape of YouTube. Remember there was that thing called the apocalypse that was in full force that year of YouTube aiming to cut down on the edgier type of content on the platform. For George, it was either continue doing YouTube as filthy Frank under those conditions and or perhaps water down his content to stay alive on the site or he could take the risk and do something that he was more genuinely passionate about and take his music making talents to the next level and become the artist that he had always wanted to be as Joe and if you're watching this video now, you pretty much know what he picked. On September 27th of 2017, that last TV Filthy Frank video will be uploaded onto the channel five years ago. Some of us want to keep exploring, some of us just want out. This monologue is really deep. 14 year old white girls go nuts for this kind of shit. In the video, we continue the filthy Frank lore with Frank being in a predicament and then telling Pink Eye that the universe that they are in is much bigger than everybody thinks and that basically the whole history of it and the whole lore of the Frank characters was written in a book titled Francis of the Filth that you, the viewers, were now able to purchase from online for your Frankopedia and entertainment pleasure. Oh, and yeah, he did acknowledge what it looked like from an outside perspective. Pink Eye, you got it all wrong. It's not like, it's not like in a sellout way or anything, you know? He's kind of gay. From there, the video went on to show just about what Frank was talking about for the book, and then we had our final moments with him. It's happening! Here we go! Mama! 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 Franco! The book was set out to be the conclusion of the Filthy Frank lore as we know it, and the video's accompaniments would also be the last that we would see of Filthy Frank. From there, George will go on to just now fully be known as Joji, and to show that he was being serious, he would certify the move when he went on to drop the six track long EP titled In Tongues, just about over a month after the last Filthy Frank video. The November 2017 project saw immediate success as it went on to peak at number 58 on the US Billboard 200 when it debuted there. One of the songs on the EP titled Will He? Will go on to become certified platinum by the RIAA and two of them will become gold which were the tracks World Star Money Interlude and Demons. The next big Joji project will come in the form of his first studio album titled Ballads 1 which came out in October of 2018. The Ballads 1 album saw some great success immediately as well as it peaked at number 3 on the US Billboard 200 and then also went on to become a platinum album. The project saw some great hits come out of it as well such as Yeah Right and Slow Dancing in the Dark with Yeah Right going platinum and Slow Dancing in the Dark actually becoming double platinum. Other tracks in the project that also had gotten certified were Can't Get Over You and Test Drive which each went on to become gold and then the next big project that Joji went on to release was his next studio album Nectar which came out in September of 2020 and as you might have expected this album also saw immediate success as it also peaked at number three on the US Billboard 200 and eventually managed to go gold as well in terms of the album. As for the top singles in this one Nectar gave us three gold certified songs which were Sanctuary, Run, and 
Give Me Love. Now at the current time, the next Joji project that is due to come out is his third studio album titled Smithereens and that is set to be released later this year on November 4th, 2022. Two tracks have been released from the upcoming album as of the making of this video, which are the Yukon Interlude track and the very popular slash successful song Glimpse of Us, which that one went on to peak at number one in several different countries outside of the US and in the US debuted at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 and eventually later ended up peaking at number eight on that same board. Along with those accomplishments, the song also had great Spotify success as well as the song peaked at number one domestically in the US and went number one globally on the platform as well. And to end off on the music notes, no pun intended, the EP and the three subsequent studio albums that all happen and are set to occur were made via slash through the 88 Rising Company. Now along with this transition of now being known as the musical artist Joji and leaving his filthy YouTube personalities behind, George went on to certify this said transition even more by basically going on like these press runs as himself. He's made it onto several popular internet shows like Hot Ones, Sneaker Shopping with Complex, GQ videos, Billboard videos, Genius videos, and he would also even go to the more mainstream outlets like when he made his TV debut on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Along with all of this, Joji would also do interviews where of course he would talk about himself, his projects, and his upcoming ones, but he would also sometimes be asked about the Filthy Frank part of his life, which he never really shied away from talking about, like when he spoke about it in this Pigeons and Planes interview. Do you think you would have done this like focused on Joji earlier if Pink Guy and Filthy Frank didn't take off like they did? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, everything was based off trial and error. If something didn't take off, then I'd get the point and move on to the next thing immediately. So I definitely, yeah, if, if the other stuff didn't work out, then I would have gone straight into straight into Joji stuff. I was doing Joji stuff anyway, always. I just wasn't releasing it publicly. And once also even talked about it in a Vice interview of how he knew that this transition to Joji was going to be a risk, but that he knew that he had to try it. Back when I was too afraid to make the transition, it was a it was a genuine concern. I was under the impression that, you know, that was that was my pinnacle. It's your peak. This is my opus. <laughs> this, is <your> opus. <laughs> this is my opus. Like <laughs> I'm gonna be yelling on the internet, making semi valid points here and there. You know, I thought that was like, I was depressed that that was going to be it. What did it take for you to get that, I guess, confidence that, okay, you know, I want to do this now. Forget mm. what anybody who doubts me says or forget the own doubt that I have. I'm worried. There's always that doubt. But, that this won't work out? Yeah. But also, at the same time, at least I tried. You know, that's that's really what matters to me. And man, did that work out. But with the final Filthy Frank video already having been released to the public in September of 2017, he confirmed the end of the character's run later that year in December. When on the at Filthy Frank Twitter account, he posted a now deleted tweet where it said that he was done with that comedy as the Frank character and show, and that he felt that the fan base needed an official explanation as to why that was the case, which he summed up into two major points, with the first one saying that unfortunately he no longer enjoyed producing that content, and on the second point saying that he has several serious health concerns including but not limited to throat tissue damage and neurological conditions and then he will go on to express his gratitude for the audience that he had garnered and the relationship that he had with them but that now it was time to move on with that he didn't really post anything more on his filthy frank social media accounts as the last thing that he put up was a meme onto his at papa franku instagram shitposting account on may of 2018 and we didn't hear anything more out of those accounts since that was until december 8th 2019 came along when the ad filthy frank twitter post posted a pink eye meme onto the account. A lot of people thought that this could have been a sign of a filthy Frank and or pink eye comeback, but later on on the Papa Franco Instagram account, they had acknowledged that a tweet was posted onto the filthy Frank Twitter account and said that it was done intentionally to prevent Twitter from deleting the inactive profile. And then they were now going to have a third party engage on the account to prevent it from getting deleted. But from there, then in the middle of 2021, kind of the same thing would happen when on the pink eye Spotify account, some things would get posted on it being music from the older filthy Frank videos. Again, some some people speculated here that this could have been a sign of a comeback from either Frank or Pink Eye, but then the songs got inexplicably removed from the account with no official acknowledgement of the situation from any parties. Judging from that situation, it's reasonable to think that the Spotify account probably just got hacked for that time being. And since all of those events that had taken place, we hadn't really heard anything more or have had any updates from any of the Filthy Frank social media accounts. But just because we weren't getting any more Filthy Frank content, didn't mean that we wouldn't have other people out there try to replicate his success. 
Many creators will try to go and recreate that filthy Frank aura, but to no avail, mainly due to people not exactly being able to capture the essence of what filthy Frank's content stood for. That, and I don't think that YouTube was necessarily pushing out any of these people's contents with the way a lot of them were making their videos. But one creator that did stand out above the rest was this guy. This guy right here that you're seeing, his name Eli, and he's ran and currently runs a YouTube channel called EJM, but on the day of March 20th, 2019, he would upload a video titled Filthy Frank Reborn onto a new channel called TV Filthy Frank 2. And this video just about got into everybody's recommendations when it first came out, as the title and thumbnail caught many people's attention and probably fooled a lot of them, having a good amount of viewers think that this was from the actual TV Filthy Frank channel at first glance. But either way, got them to click and watch the whole thing, and in that video, TV Filthy Frank 2 would unofficially continue the lore of where the original Filthy Frank series left off. <laughs> I'll change it. Shit. And with the virality of that first video, Eli continued to make content on the channel as if he was Frank himself. And while at first not a lot of people would be 100% supportive of the idea, many decided to give it a chance and through just uploading videos here and there, TV Filthy Frank 2 had gone on to see what many would say be a successful run with that channel. He created videos based off of the original Filthy Frank contents, like the series Loser Reads Hater comments, and had the Filthy Frank-esque commentary rants, and even made sequels to the more iconic ones like Rat Chef and Hair Cake. Along with these uploads, he would also implement what Joji's been up to into his content and would also have his own pink eye portrayal. Just like what George had done with his own Filthy Frank channels, this Eli guy would also make music on his TV Filthy Frank 2 account, basing it off of George's pink eye and Joji music. So while TV Filthy Frank 2 was adding on to his catalog of content on his channel, the original TV Filthy Frank account was actually getting some of its videos removed by YouTube. When George had left the channel back in 2017, it had 162 uploads on it, but when you check now, it only has 155 videos available. Some of the more notable videos that got removed by YouTube here were the cake trilogy videos that we had talked about being vomit cake, hair cake, and human cake. And I'm sure you could tell why they got removed. And another one that bit the dust was a video titled People I Hate, which was Frank talking about the types of people that he, well, did not like. And yeah, apparently that was not good enough to be on YouTube anymore. And who knows if any more videos are going to follow. So while unfortunately those videos aren't available on the YouTube platform anymore, all the Filthy Frank videos that have pretty much ever been made, including the removed ones, have all been archived beforehand and have been uploaded to the archive.org website by other people, with little to no worries of those ever being removed from the internet. So don't worry Filthy Frank fans, history is still being preserved. So with that going on, George has just continued on being Joji, not really worried about what's going on with his Filthy Frank YouTube channel. But while we're talking about the YouTube aspect of everything here, George's three main YouTube friends that he collabed a lot with, Max Mofo, iDubs, and Chad, aka Anything for Views, those guys have continued on being content creators on the platform, with Max posting more primarily on his Max Mofo Pokemon account, and also being the co-host of the channel Cold Ones, which is a podcast slash talk show that is hosted by Anything for Views slash Chad himself. And then with iDubs, he has continued to post on YouTube and is now taking the sport of boxing as a future business endeavor. The three friends have have continued to have relatively successful careers in their own ways, but they have never forgotten about their friendships with George. With sometimes having it happen occasionally, some of the highlights on the Cold One show would be when George would be brought up. The most asked question was, do you still speak to George? I spoke to George today. We keep in contact. I'm pretty proud of what George is doing. George to me, like every time I talk to George, it's like, we'll send each other a meme. But we've never had a full length call because we haven't need like when you get older you stop talking to people you have different lives you guys did a whole you've done a whole lot of things with george on that channel well Did you've he, done a, you've done a lot of things with george yeah yeah did <laughs> <laughs> no, we're still we're still friends but you know he's on the he's in the upper echelon now we're, we're, we're still in the lower bracket it's no, YouTube. no. <laughs> and then with that, we even had a moment where the Cold Ones crew listened to the, at the time, new Sanctuary song from Joji, and it had Max seemingly look sad while listening to it. Right? Drink more water, bro. And then to bring iDubs into the mix, just earlier this year, he went on to the Cold One show and had brought up his thoughts as to if Joji will ever go on to the show slash podcast itself. How long do you think until we'll get George on Cold Ones? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's probably never gonna happen. <laughs>
we harass him enough, maybe. I think you need to go through a lot of levels of management to get George. But yeah, whether Joji goes on cold ones or not, that's just something that we're gonna have to wait and see. For now, Joji's public interactions with the group will just have to be seen from his Twitter likes tab, where you can see that he occasionally likes some of Max Mofo's memes. And now, one more thing that some of you are probably wondering about is, now that Joji's this huge artist with millions of fans, most of them being new, do they know about George's past as Filthy Frank? Or did they ever find out about it? Well, that question would be answered in May of 2020, when the hashtag, hashtag Joji is over party, would trend on Twitter after an account tweeted out their shock that George Miller had said the n-word in a song before, and had found it offensive. And then, in a somehow poetic way, that had Joji fans that already knew of George's past actions as Filthy Frank, mocked the new fans that didn't know at all. Fortunately for everyone involved, no one ended up getting cancelled here, as nobody should have been anyways in this situation. But yeah, that was something that happened. And as Joji's fanbase grows more and more by the years, one has to wonder if history will repeat itself. But any true supporter of George slash Joji's would understand what his intentions were with the Filthy Frank characters and will come to his defense at the end of the day. And that's where we come to the conclusion of the Filthy Frank aftermath of him leaving. Well, at least up to the five years that has been since his last video was uploaded. Looking back at the whole thing, it actually is kind of crazy to see how everything worked out. George's creation of the Filthy Frank character was at really like at an all time high in 2017. And that's just about the time that YouTube started cracking down on the majority of edgy videos out there, including Frank's. Although George wasn't making much money through YouTube specifically, he did use the experience he got from it to learn about a lot of things, like how people work and what they like and don't like, and he would use that knowledge and experience to up his level in what he wanted in life, which was to create music that he was truly passionate about, and to leave the Frank character and show at a good place on his own terms to pursue that true music passion was more than likely the best thing that he could have ever done for himself, his health, his career career, the fans, and his legacy. The story of Filthy Frank is the story of what one man, George Miller, was able to do for the online entertainment scene and YouTube and internet zeitgeist. And the story of Joji is one that is still being told to this day, at a scale that many artists out there would ever only dream of achieving. And as Joji's music and his popularity grow more and more by the years, one has to wonder, will Filthy Frank ever be back, even if it's just for a split moment? That's a question that many will keep asking until the end of time, but until we get 100% certainty, that that TV Filthy Frank channel will keep gaining subscribers that are hoping for a return one day. In the meantime, we can just keep enjoying Joji's work, whether that's his new music or anything else that he did beforehand, and I think that that previous work should be appreciated, because as Max Mofo put it well, I don't think that we'll ever see another type of content creator like Filthy Frank on YouTube. I think George got out of the platform at the exact right time. Now if you were trying to make it as a Filthy Frank on YouTube, you couldn't do it now. You would get completely demonetized and you would get fucked in the ass he left at the absolute perfect time to do what he's always wanted yeah. to do it's not only that you would get demonetized you would probably be removed from the site yeah so although it might not look like that filthy frank will ever come back some continue to grasp onto the line that was said by yadaron near the end of the last tv filthy frank video my child francis has been banished to a place far far away but he is powerful he will be back now while that line can be open up for interpretation, and we obviously would just have to wait and see if it comes true, one thing is for certain, and that is that George has not forgotten about his past filthy persona. To feel represented by somebody, or like a group of people even, and like when I was in Indonesia I just like remembered what it felt like. What about you Jenny? Sorry, And with that, that will be the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in another one.